Yo, what is going on today? We're going to be doing the earliest deadline first algorithm. Let me look at my notes. The first thing that we need to identify is which one has the shorter processing time. Hold on. All right. The one that has the shorter processing time is P2. So that has priority, at least initially. With earliest deadline first, there is a different thing to it. But let's just keep it in the corner that P2 has the higher priority. That way we don't get confused. So the first thing that we need to do is draw the Gantt chart. So with paint, I can take the guesswork out of making my line straight. You typically want to do double the initial period. I'm going to do zero. I'm going to do 150 because that is double the largest period. But in the middle here, I'm just going to do 80 just because it's easier for me to do the math in that regard. And then likewise, we are going to do 40 and then 120. We're also going to make the little carrots in between. All right, let us start. So the first thing that we want to do is mark where each of these processes start. We can do that by seeing where the period starts. So at first, like these both, both of these processes start at the beginning. Obviously, only one of these will start executing, and that's the one with the highest priority. So let's continue down the list and look at the periods. So P2 will execute, or at least try to execute, every 40. So boom, 40, 80, 120. And then it stops at one. It stops here because it doesn't go past 160. Same thing with period process one. So this starts off at zero. And then it also has a spot at the 75 mark. That's the 75 mark. And that's also where P1 resides. It also has a place here, but that is where the Gantt chart ends. So we don't really do anything at that point. So with that out of the way, let's start drawing these boxes. So with earliest deadline first, the difference is that you draw whatever the earliest deadline is. We'll see that right now. So we're going to start with the highest priority. That is period two. So we start off here and then we end at processing time 20. All right, easy dub. So P2. And then process, I like to put the processing time that it did, just so I can keep track of it. I like to put it in the box, in the top right corner of the box. We also have to remember that P1 was also slated to go in this time slot. So we put it right, it starts right after the first process. So without further ado, let us draw the next part. But remember, there is a process here and we have to determine whether or not the process that we're drawing right now takes priority or the process that is interrupting takes priority so let's draw what we have right now let's see so p1 and then p1 ran for about 20 units this means that since the overall processing time was 35, obviously 35 minus 20 is 15. So P1 now has a processing time of 15 just for this, just because it ran for 20 units before stopping at P2. Since P2 has a processing time of 20, we have to select what the earliest deadline is. Because in this specific situation, P1 has an earlier deadline than P2, we actually finish doing P1. So then uh, 40 plus 15, that's, why am I blinking on math? 55. So that's 55. And let's recap that. So with other scheduling, scheduling algorithm, with rate monotonic, we drop everything just to do the next process that comes in line. With earliest deadline first, 
we have to gauge which one is going to be faster to complete. Because in this situation, P1 has already ran for 20 units of time, it now has a processing time of 15 left. Because of this, we have to account for that when we're seeing which or what process do we either finish out or start anew. Because P1 is has only 15 left, we draw that. And this is why I like to put right next to it the processing time that it took just so it's easier for me to get it all so this ends at the 55 mark remember p2 has yet to start so i like to draw an arrow where its starting point is so at the 55 mark we start and then we go about 20 units if you recall P1's period is at 75. This is the 75 mark. So P2 actually finishes exactly at the moment that P1 starts. So there is no love lost here. So that should be one. I think that, no, that's P2. All right. So then P2 ran for 20 units of time. So let's do that there. So P1 starts exactly at 75, but remember, P2 has a period of 40 each, and it starts at 80. Sorry for the delay, my rib cage gave out on me. So P2 starts at 80, because its period is 40 each. Because of this, so P1 will execute for about 5 units. Let's try and... All right, let's just try not to pull any punches. Let us just draw. Draw it out here. So P1 is in this little tiny block here. So P1, and it also runs for only five units. So that means the processing time that is left is 30. I can draw more. So... That means the processing time left is 30. Now we have to see which one of these deadlines have an earlier time to finish. Obviously, 20 is less than 30, so we will start anew and we will start off with P2. So we draw this for about 20 units. So we go all the way to 100 and then P2 is in this block and it ran for 20. Remember that we still have yet to finish P1 because it only ran for only five units of time. So let's continue this algorithm or this process, I'm sorry. We'll continue this process for about 20 units. Boom, P1. And P1 ran for about 20 units until it got interrupted by P2 because we just hit P2's period at the 120 mark. So now EDF, earliest deadline first, has to make that decision on which process <clears throat> should this be executing. Should it be executing P2 or should it be executing P1? Recall that P1 has ran for five set, uh, for five units of time. P1 has also ran for 20 units of time in this specific instance. So 25, uh, 35 minus 25, that means it only has 10 units remaining. So we have to factor that in on whether or not we want to start with the different process or if we want to continue the process that's already happening. Since 10 is less than 20, we will continue with the process that we've already been doing. So let us draw the box. We only need to draw for 10 more. <clears throat> this is P1, and then P1 only ran for 10. So with P2, the starting point is now at the 130 mark. And then we actually have a clear shot from 130 to 150. Because the processing time of P2 is exactly 20, we actually have a clean shot. 
there. So this would be P2. Then it ran for 20. This met its deadline. <clears throat> so it did not miss the deadline. To compute the processing ah, to compute the processing power, let me look at my notes. It's straight up the processing time over the period for all of the processes. So 35 over 75 plus 20 over 40. And then this would be 0.96 mother crapper. 